So about a week ago, maybe a little bit more than that, I talked about how I have started a new challenge using GNOME. And I promised that I wasn't going to overload you guys on GNOME videos, but I do feel the need to make another one because I have to have a little bit of a rant. And that's what we're going to do today. I have some bones to pick with the GNOME guys and specifically their desktop environment. And I have a YouTube channel, therefore I have a place to pick those bones. So, uh, I think the metaphor has jumped the shark, as they say. But let's go ahead and talk about that today. But before we do, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. I would really help the channel. So, I have some... So, first off, I've been using GNOME now for... Oh, let's see. I have it actually counted in my NeoFetch. I have it... I've been using it now for 16 days. And so, I'm a little bit over two weeks. And I have some thoughts on it, right? So this is not my first review of GNOME. Obviously, I've talked about that before and I've used GNOME many, many times, but this is the first time I've been using it as a physical daily driver, like on my main machine with both of my monitors hooked up and all the kit and audio stuff that goes along with my main machine. This is where I record my videos. It's where I do all my writing for my main job. Everything is right here on this machine that you're looking at. And I can actually get rid of Audacity, you guys don't need to see that the whole time. This is what my GNOME looks like. This is what my setup looks like after 16 days. And overall, in terms of customization, it's been fine. I found all the extensions that I want in order to make this usable for me. I talked about that mostly in the other video, so we don't need to get into that. So what I want to do today was talk about a few of the things that just are really, really bugging me or that have bugged me over the course of the last two weeks. And this is just me going to be rambling on for a little bit, talking about a few of those things. I have no set number of things that I ha that bug me, but we'll just jump in. So first, the first thing, and this, this is something that's still going on, I have not been able to fix. So I have moved from the X org session to the Wayland session. Now, I wasn't planning on doing this because, as you guys know, about a month and a half ago or so, I made a video saying I was going to die on that hill. I'm never leaving X org. You're going to pry it out of my cold, dead hands. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm here a month and a half later, I'm using Wayland. I'm not happy about it. Now, first off, the normal stuff that I have problems with Wayland don't seem to be a problem in you know, GNOME. I'm doing screen capture right now, and it works just fine, right? You know, things move around. It's very, very fluid. So there are some things that, in, at least in the GNOME land, work better on Wayland than I, in previously experienced. So that's fine. But the reason why I switched from Xorg to Wayland isn't because I wanted to. It's because I got a brand new monitor. And the monitor that I got is a different resolution much different resolution than the other monitor that I have. So the monitor that you're looking at right now is 1080p. The monitor that, it, my second monitor, is a weird 28-inch LG dual-up thing that actually has two monitors inside of it or that you can act as two monitors, and that one's 1440p. So I have two different resolutions. I have two different refresh rates going on here, and it's kind of a mess, right? Xorg does not handle that well. Now... If I put my glasses on, it's fine. I can leave it at the native scaling and I can read it. But I wanted it bigger. So I'm going to be showing you a, a GIF here in, in a minute. I'll put that in an editing that shows you a couple of things that I'm having problems with. So the first one is, and you, you, I didn't pause long enough for this to be uh, blatant, but when I right click on the wallpaper to, to get to like the change wallpaper settings, that's usually the way that I access it, you'll notice that the menu itself is really small. And the thing is that it shouldn't be because I have both of those monitors where that GIF is being recorded or that video is being recorded. I have that set up as a 200 scaled factor. So in GNOME settings, if I open up GNOME settings here, like so, and then I go to display, display down here, you can actually see that I have these monitors set as 200 scale. And then my main monitor, which is the 32 inch here I have set as 100 scale. So because this is 1080p, I don't need to be scaled at all. So that little menu should not be little. And I don't know why. Now, I have other problems where things aren't scaled. So yesterday, one of the mods in my Discord server helped me figure out that the things that run on X Wayland don't scale at all. So things like Crusader right now are still running in X Wayland. Steam obviously runs in X Wayland. Things like Tilda and a couple other ones just don't run in Wayland natively. They run in X Wayland. Anything that's like that don't scale at all. So I'll take a picture here of 
Crusader on that monitor, and you can see that it's still really small compared to everything else, which has been scaled up. That bugs me, obviously, because I don't... <laughs> I, the number one thing that I want out of a computer, honestly, especially when it comes to a desktop environment, is consistency. And I talked about this in my last GNOME video, is that it's inconsistent. And this continues to be the case. And uh, this isn't just a GNOME problem. This is also a GNOME plus Wayland problem. So this is obviously caused by Wayland. So that's another problem. Another issue, and I'll show the GIF here again, or the video here again, is when I open up an application, usually a GNOME application, and I don't know if I can get it to actually show up on this machine or, or if I'm just going to have to show the GIF. So if I open up settings again, every time I open up something, and this is the, actually doesn't seem to matter what, what actual monitor I'm on, whether it's scaled up or not, it actually shows the window in a different size. Like when I close this, it was full screen. So I close it, open up settings again, and there you go. What is it doing? Why is it doing that? That's just the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. And it does it with a lot of applications sometimes even when they're not closed and open so when i come back to my computer after i you know i've walked away for a little bit and i come back and bring it out of hibernation i find that vivaldi which is my main browser has gone from maximized full screen to a little bitty window and i don't know why i don't it doesn't do it in any other desktop environment it doesn't do it in a window manager it doesn't you know and it drives me effing bonkers <laughs> it just no, that's not the way things are supposed to work. And, and it's like it's, it has nothing to do, obviously, or at least it doesn't it doesn't seem to be completely to do with hibernation or sleep or whatever, because you guys just saw oh, I have settings open and I make it open up in a different position there. I make it I make it big, I make it into full screen. I close it and then I go back and here we go. What was it doing? What what is that? That's dumb. Don't do that. I I had it full screen. I always wanted it full screen. If I that's the way I closed it. Now, this is not just a GNOME problem. KDE has the same problem sometimes. They've tried to fix it with special settings in their settings sauce manager, but that doesn't work all all time either. So maybe this is just hard. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe this is just a hard thing. But someone out there had to have coded this specific behavior, you would think. Or at least something that they've done has, has caused this behavior. I don't know. It's not the way that it should work. And it drives me bonkers. So that's uh, one thing. The, the scaling issues and the windows always appearing in different places and different sizes just absolutely drives me crazy. So another problem that I've had, but that I've since solved with some help with some friends, is that when I have a window open, so if I just open up a terminal here, and then I have another window that spawns, but isn't in focus. So, for example, if I were to open up a file picker, so if I'm in you know Discord, or I'm in Vivaldi, or whatever, usually it's an Electron app. So, so if I'm in Todoist, or, Viv or if I'm in v Discord, and it's, a, it's an Electron app, and I open up a file picker, and instead of having the file picker show up on top of the application so you can actually see it, it instead appears underneath it, or it did. I ended up having to set a environment variable to fix that. And of course, I couldn't set a global environment variable because for whatever reason, it slowed GNOME way down in terms of launch time. I actually ended up setting an environment variable just for Discord and Todoist so that they would actually launch their file pickers on top of the application instead of below it that was another thing that really really truly bothered me that ended up being a portal problem so portals seemed to be a good idea but that was a that was a pain in the ass and it took a good hour or so to figure out maybe even a little bit longer so that's another thing that was really bugging me in see here's the thing guys is that i give a lot of shit to the kde guys for their app for their desktop environment being buggy now, I will say that KD is still more buggy than GNOME, but GNOME seems to hold itself on a pedestal. A lot of people put GNOME on a pedestal as, oh my goodness, this is the, the most stable thing you've, you're ever going to try. You're just going to use it, and you're never going to have a problem with it. And when you do have a problem with it, everyone and their brother, and I experienced this on Mastodon this morning when I tweeted about this, or tooted about it. When I say... GNOME isn't as stable as you think it is, people are going to come back at you and say, well, yeah, well, it has to be an extension. If you're having problems, it's obviously an extension that's causing the issues. 
That is a load of bull pucky. <laughs> it's a load of bull crap is what it is. It's not always true. Now, I'm not saying that extensions can't be the problem. They can be the problem, but they're not always the problem. But the problem is, is that when you go to the GNOME community and you say you're having some issues, their number one place to look is always extensions. They always make the assumption that it's the extension. And that level of arrogance, it feels like, and maybe it's just uh, an assumption on their part, that level, that it just makes it feel like they don't think that GNOME can do anything wrong. That it's always the extension's fault. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's not always the extension's fault. Because the, the some of the issues that I've had completely remove... Gnome settings, complete the, the the decomp settings for Gnome, and remove all the extensions, and it was still having the problem. Now that problem turned out to be something that was my fault, but it just kind of goes to prove that Gnome can have some issues, even if it's you know user generated issues. And same thing with this you know settings thing. I've disabled the plugins or the extensions it still does it right i've even disabled the scaling i just went back to 100 percent scaling on all the monitors and still does it right that's not an extensions problem right so blaming the extensions doesn't make ever make sense to me it's not because extensions can't be bad or cause problems but assuming that it is an extension just doesn't feel like the way things should be gone gone about if that makes any sense at all so so that's another area that I've had some issues with. Now, let's have some fun and talk about some of the things that I like. Because there have been some things that I have enjoyed while do using GNOME. First off, the built-in integration for VPNs is really nice. Now, I know KDE also does this, so it's not a GNOME-exclusive feature. So when I turned on my VPN using WireGuard up here in the icon section it actually showed me that i was in fact connected to a vpn which was really nice it also allowed me to control it now one thing i will warn you is that if you use the terminal to start your vpn up and then proceed to turn it off with their handy dandy button here in the quick access settings you're going to break things your internet's not going to work anymore <laughs> i tried that if you want the vpn to work completely in the gui you'll have to set that up separately because it it just is the way that it works. You can't kind of mix and match there. So that's that's just kind of the way that it works. That's not a GNOME thing. But it was nice having the little icon up there saying, hey, you're," because oftentimes when I connect to my VPN, I have to, I actually have a script that pings a server off in wherever, and it will tell me if I'm connected. This way I have an icon that says, hey, you're connected to a VPN. That was nice. Another thing that I've really enjoyed is having the icons up here tell me when screen's being recorded when the microphone is active i do a lot of videos i do a lot of recording and podcasts and stuff like that and sometimes i'm a dumbass and i f forget to turn off audacity from recording or i forget to stop obs from recording having an icon up there saying hey your f microphone is still live uh, that's nice that's not something that other desktop environments do just to go backwards and talk about a negative aspect a little bit, and this is not that big of a deal, but it's definitely something that you should keep in mind if you're going to use GNOME, is that this thing is a memory hog. I have never used this much memory in my entire life outside of using City Skylines, which usually uses about 20 gigabytes, or at least did back in the day. Like, on a huge city in City Skylines, I'd use like 20 gigabytes. Right now, if you can see up here in Vitals, I'm using 14.9. And the thing is, is that you'd think that, well, yeah, Matt, you're recording, you have Audacity and OBS, you know, recording and stuff, that's going to take a lot of memory. Of course, that's what you'd think. But if I were to close those and stop recording, that number doesn't go down. It ranges between 13 and 17 gigabytes completely. Now, I do have things open, right? I have Steam open right now. But even if I were to close Steam, let me go ahead and close it. We'll see how much that goes, actually goes down. We'll see. It's, it may go down like a gigabyte or two. But it stays really, really high. It went out to 14. <laughs> okay, so it's still going. It's still at 14. That's with Steam closed. Now, a lot of that seems to be Vivaldi. Vivaldi uses more memory in GNOME for some reason than it does in something like Xmonad or Qtile. Why that is, I don't know. It's really weird. Uh, that's 
probably more of a Vivaldi problem than Gnome problem, but I noticed it here. Now, for me personally, that's not a big deal. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM, and unused RAM is pointless, so use all the RAM you want, Gnome. You're not going to scare me. But for someone who only has like 16 gigabytes of RAM in their computer, and they experience this problem, eh, you're going to have some problems, right? So that was another issue that I, I faced, and I wanted to point out before we, we got too far into the positives. <laughs> I don't want, don't want to be too positive. That'd be bad. An another thing that I really enjoyed was that there's an extension that allows you to show your your clipboard i'm not going to show that just in case there's a password in there but that's there that's really nice uh it means that i didn't have to set up clip, clip menu d which is something that i usually do in a window manager so that was set up that was nice i i do seem to be kind of going back and forth between positives but there's another negative that i want to talk about real quick, real quick. i'm sorry but there's just so much uh i have not been able to find a terminal that i enjoy on gnome first off some of it is because no matter how many times i open it up I still can't get it to stay full screen, which is still just dumb as hell, but whatever. This is Kitty. This is what I use in a window manager, but as you can see, it doesn't really work all that well in Wayland. It has the bar along the top. I don't know if you can get rid of that. I haven't really looked into it. Uh, the GNOME uh, terminal thing, like so, I don't care for this like at all. Maybe if I went and themed it and just made it look more proper and spend some time actually making it look good it'd be fine but i've had some problems with gnome terminal where some things just won't work so i use nc spot watch it launch this time and oh <laughs> of course it worked this time uh, i don't <laughs> the last few times i tried in, in gnome terminal it didn't even launch it just sat there and completely hung maybe spotify was having some problems so maybe that's not the issue that i thought it was so i i've i've also tried black box and black box looks like this and i get errors um, I downloaded it as a flat pack, so I'm assuming those are flat pack errors. Uh, I didn't really look into it because I just give up. You know, if you're going to give me errors, I don't want you. Uh, I also tried, I also have Alacrity installed. So this is what Alacrity looks like. That actually looks better than Kitty, so I might actually use that. And then I also have another one installed. I have Tilda installed, if I can spell, which I can't. So Tilda is what I've been using as a drop down terminal, and uh, it, it's fine. It's definitely not something that works well with Wayland. So I've had some issues finding a terminal that I enjoy using that has the proper GUI kind of aesthetic. So Kitty does not have any GUI at all. And I've been using that. I would, If I'm going to enrich myself into the GUI ecosystem of GNOME, I wanted one that actually, you know, has a GUI. So I was thinking about GNOME Terminal. That one's had some problems. Maybe I'll give it a try because it looks like it's going to actually work now. Blackbox has those errors. Alacrity is kind of like Kitty doesn't have a GUI, so uh, there's there's a couple other ones. There's t uh, Tilex. I don't think it's been updated in a very long time. So, despite the fact that I used to really like it, I don't think I'll be able to use it, uh, and I don't think that it works well in Wayland. Uh, there's another one called like Terminator, maybe that is that is really old. I don't know if it's still updated or not. That's been around for a very long time, so maybe I'll try that. But I've been having some tr troubles finding a, a terminal that I enjoy using in GNOME. It's fine. I haven't been using it as much as I usually do because, look at here, I have, I have Emacs. I have been messing around with Emacs. I've, I'm on an Emacs challenge along with this. I'm not making another video about Emacs, uh, at least until the end of the challenge. So I'm not going to bore you with that. But that's beside the point. Also, I'm pretty sure there was one hell of a, a delay there on the... the I don't know, I, didn't, I just kind of cut it out of my eye that where the I closed it on one screen and it took like a minute to close on the OBS preview. But whatever, that's beside the point. All right, so some positives, some negatives. My biggest issues right now, go back to the beginning, are the windows not opening up the same size each time. That bugs the crap out of me. But also the, in, the inconsistent scaling on the scaled monitor is just the stupidest thing. And just kind of goes to prove that Wayland isn't ready. Now, as Alexa said in my Discord the other day, try doing scaling at all on Xorg. And I said, touche, because you can't scale it all on X Xorg very easily, at least not on different monitors. So I guess that's a, a good point. But still, this feels not ready for me. <laughs> it, is, this, it, it is. But I'm continuing to use Wayland. I'm, I'm giving it a try. We'll see how that it works. Uh, I've been asked to try either the KDE version of Wayland or a Wayland compositor and see if I have some of the same issues. My worry 
and this is where I'll end the video, is that if I go into another desktop environment, or especially if I go into a window manager, I'll never return to GNOME in my entire life. Because ladies and gentlemen, as Muda would say, I miss window managers, like a lot, a lot. Like I, I never, when that, at the end of the six months challenge with GNOME, if, if I make it that long, I'm hoping to make it that long. If I make it that long, at the end of the day, and at the end of that day, I will really never, ever, 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 ever want to use GNOME again. And I've only been using it for 16 days. I still like, I still have like 160 to go. I think there's like 180 days in six months or something like that. So I'm not even, I'm not even close. I'm not even a month in. I'm half a month in. And I'm already feeling like this. I can't even imagine where I'm going to be in a month or two months or five months. I'm, I'm probably going to want to just murder all the gnomes <laughs> all out there. All the gnomes out there. All right. Never want to see a garden gnome again either. So yeah, I, I see the thing is that gnome isn't bad. I know I've spent a whole video talking about all the gripes that I have, but similar with KDE, I always have problems with KDE as well. I always talk about this, right? I love KDE, but KDE's buggy. When you like something, you do criticize it. And the thing is, like, I like KDE a lot better, so I criticize it more. With GNOME, I don't like it at all, like, not even a little bit. I like some things about it, but it's really not my cup of tea, or cup of coffee, whatever. But... I still criticize it because there's just some things about it that just really, really, truly bug me, and I'm, I'm going to do that. That's just the way that I am. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on GNOME or whatever, you can leave those in the comment section below. I know that GNOME works perfectly for a lot of people, and, and a lot of you out there, I've heard from people in my comment sections on Mastodon, on Discord, you're all GNOME people, and you, you really, really like GNOME, and it works really, really well for you. Some of you silly fools out there like using GNOME without any extensions whatsoever. You like vanilla GNOME and you just use it. I don't understand you and I don't think we can be friends. I'm sorry. <laughs> vanilla GNOME for me is just a no-go completely. Like there's just something, like I have to have, like just purely just one extension bringing the panel up so that I can always see it somewhere along the line, whether it's, you know, all the way across the top, all the way across the bottom as a Mac doc, whatever. I don't care what it looks like, but having it hidden away where I actually have to press a button to get to it, I don't like it. So I have an extension to fix that, and that's good that I can fix it, but if I were to force to use Vanilla Gnome, I would have already failed the challenge because I hate it. I can't stand Vanilla Gnome. I, I've managed to make this usable for me, and I'm okay in it. I'll make it through the six months, but if it was Vanilla Gnome, I would have been done ages ago. So that's it for this video. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. If you're still watching all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. It really does help the channel when people leave thumbs up. It, it makes more people have access to the video and makes it possible so that I can make more Linux content. So it's the easiest and cheapest way of supporting me if you want to do so. If you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linuxcast. If you want to support me in other ways, you can also head on over to the store where we have a whole bunch of merch, including desk mats, t-shirts, hoodies, hats, all sorts of stuff. You can head on over there to shop.thelinkscast.org. All the proceeds to that go directly to help the channel and mean more links content for you guys. So thank you so very much for checking that out. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys, again, very awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time. I hope you have a wonderful week, weekend, whatever. I'll see you next time.